orange juice, carbonated water, and sugar. Mix it all together and you get one of the most iconic historical drinks to ever hit the market. Today, please sit back as we look back at a global phenomenon and one of my personal favorites, Orangina. Orangina was originally invented all the way back in 1933 by a Spanish chemist named Agustin Trigo in the capital of Valencia. It was a simple drink using orange juice, carbonated water, and sugar. It was given the name Narangina and Trigo immediately knew he was onto something. In 1936, he took his concoction to the Marisol Trade Fair in France, which is a very big deal. Originally starting in 1924, the Marsal Trade Fair has become one of the largest fairs in the world, allowing many artisanal crafters from all over the world to share and sell their art with the rest of the world, usually with the hopes of expanding to other markets. And luckily for our friend Augustin Trigo, French businessman Leon Baton acquired quite the liking to the drink and saw his opportunity to capitalize on it. Sadly, however, Baton would never see the drink produced as World War II was starting to create quite the conflict in France. But, in 1947, his son, Jean-Claude Baton, took over his father's company and was able to finally start producing the beverage. He kept most of the original recipe with a few small differences to appeal to more of a European and North African market. And it was a success as it quickly became a staple of most North African countries. In 1951, Bataan introduced the signature 8 ounce orange fruit shaped glass bottle. In 1962, the company had to move its roots to the place where it took off, Marsal, as the country it was originally produced in, Algeria, had gained their independence. In 1984, the company merged with Pernod Ricard, the world's second largest wine and spirits seller. In 1978, though, the drink finally hit the North American market. Licensed through Cadbury Schweppes, it was originally called Aurelia, but was changed back to the name Orangina in 1985. It was originally produced in Canada, but was moved to Florida when the licensing was abandoned from Cadbury, who was slowing their role in North American soda ventures, and was moved to Mott's, who was then eventually owned by Dr. Pepper. Due to the United States being ourselves, we had the only Orangina that was flavored with high fructose corn syrup instead of natural sugar. Canada's version of the drink used a mix of real sugar and fructose glucose. There are imported versions in Canada, however, that are made just like the European recipe. Production for North America was eventually moved back to Canada. This brings us to more modern times. In 2000, Bernard Ricard was looking to sell Orangina and they wanted the biggest beverage company there is, Coca-Cola. But it was actually legally denied when they tried selling to Coke or Pepsi due to anti-competitive laws. And what that means is basically Coke and Pepsi are so large and have so much of a hold on the already existing global market that they are legally not allowed to acquire new companies. So every new product you see from them is usually created from inside the company. Orangina was eventually bought by Cadbury Schweppes, who already had experience with their brand in the North American market. But it only took six years, however, for Cadbury to decide they wanted to ditch the beverage business entirely and focus directly on chocolate. Kind of a bro moment, Cadbury. So, in 2006, Orangina was yet again looking for a place to call home. Coca-Cola and Pepsi were already denied, so eventually the company was left to be sold in pieces. Private equity firms Blackstone Group and Lion Capital LLP became the owners of the company under the name Orangina Schweppes and halted North American production entirely. In 2009, after a pretty ambiguous agreement, Japanese company Suntory became the sole owner of the brand and still is to this day. They have multiple licensing agreements with distributors all over the world, with some countries even having their own flavors and product lines. In North America, Orangina is distributed through Venture Food and Beverage Company. This is the complete list if you're interested. There's a lot of people making Orangina out there. It's wild. The one downfall that came with Orangina was the pulp that would naturally fall to the bottom of the bottle. So, to make sure people had a great drink every time, they heavily marketed their Shake It slogan instead of just the little writing on the bottle like most companies. Once Suntory took over the company in 2009, they went heavily into traditional marketing mainly with TV commercials and interactive events. Like this time when they had an Orangina vending machine made to purposely get your bottle stuck, forcing you to shake the machine. It was a pretty fun and innovative idea, especially since most carbonated drinks are not supposed to be shaken, and it started to reintroduce the classic, iconic slogan and the ritual, Shake It. But we can't forget when Orangina decided to hire ad agency Fred and Farid to produce multiple ads containing, well, sexualized animal characters. They had a poster campaign that looked something like these, as well as a string of TV commercials to go with it. This rocked the UK when it first came out, with many parents coming out and saying that this is very inappropriate for their children who enjoy the drink. 
which then led to Orangina stands being like, well, it's not only for kids, and Orangina commented on none of this, instead just leaving it to Stu and gain all the free publicity around the continent. They also had a pretty cool campaign that, you guessed it, had to do with shaking the cans. But the difference is they released 50,000 limited edition cans with a sensor on the bottom that talks to you when you flip the can. I don't really know what it says honestly, but I think it's a pretty nifty idea. Which brings us up to today, where they started adding a new slogan, Upgrade Your Taste. Based on this commercial, it seems as if Orangina is starting to brand itself as a fancier, more exquisite drink. Which would be the first time they ever tried to target a specific niche instead of just the general market. But no matter what, they'll never forget to make sure you know to shake it before you drink it. Looking back, we get to see a pretty cool story of a product that will not let itself die. Orangina has been through a lot and has had many different homes, but the drink has such a global likening to it that it seems as if some company will always come up and save it. Hopefully the future of Orangina continues to get brighter as it seems Suntory is doing a good job marketing the product and putting effort into actually getting its sales return. And hopefully it will become more of a commonplace in North American markets again because those ads don't lie, it really is a totally different sensation when you drink one. And that's about all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, maybe think about liking, subscribing, and sharing. And uh, always feel free to comment, whether it's just a thought on the video, a new video idea, or just a note to me. I always love everything from you guys. So stay tuned for what's in store. The next Look Back video will come out on February 3rd, and I will see you then. Or maybe even sooner. Who knows?